Word. I want to meet you in the book of Romans this evening. I want to go to the Apostle Paul for a little bit. Um, as I was praying and just asking the Father how we should start this, um, I, I, I kept circling back really to only one thought in my heart. And uh, it, it is a verse I want to open with tonight. And I, not to be too pointed, um, I can't get this one out of my head. I can't get this verse out of my head and I can't get the theme or the idea of this verse out of my heart. And I want to just wrestle a little bit of this with you tonight, if that's okay. Um, what I mean by that is I want us to just try to take this and, and, and see where we go with it. I, I, don't, I don't have a determined landing spot. I know you're supposed to have messages really squared off front and back. You know, you know where you're starting and you know the road you're going and where you want to end up. Um, sometimes I have those. In fact, most of the time I have those. But sometimes I have a thought and I know some things I want to work out. And I thought, well, you guys are becoming a place where we're real relaxed teaching and preaching and kind of like family. And so we can just wrestle out some stuff together and see where we land. And you, you can leave with some thoughts that you can work on. Because I respect the Holy Spirit in you. I, I believe that you have the same Holy Spirit. Now hold on with me here. I believe you have the same Holy Spirit Jesus had. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't think you have a lesser version of it or a, or a 2,000 year old version and he's not moving as spryly as he did in the first century. I don't believe that. I believe the Holy Spirit, the eternal, what Paul called, what Hebrews called the eternal spirit is as alive in you as it was in Jesus. I'm not encouraging you to go out here to the lake and try to walk on the water. Um, and if, if you do that, that's between you and the Holy Spirit. But I, I'm not telling you that that's what you do with the Holy Spirit. But I do believe you have the ability to hear from God. And I believe you have the same ability to hear from God as Jesus did. And what we have to do is practice cultivating that. And sometimes the only way to really practice that is to learn how to shut off the other voices. And so you have to close your ears to some of the other things, but you have to open them to the Holy Spirit. In that, we have to be open to hear things that don't sound familiar and realize that the Holy Spirit in us is capable of rising up when we hear something that doesn't sound familiar and holding our hand as we wrestle with it. Otherwise, what happens is we've been so conditioned in the church to be on guard against false doctrine that anytime we hear something that doesn't sound exactly like what we grew up on or exactly like what we hear at church or exactly what our favorite preacher is saying, we start to push those voices out and we don't listen, even though it could be the revelation the Holy Spirit's trying to get us to listen to. But we've been so conditioned in the church to be on guard against false doctrine that we don't listen to anything we have to wrestle with. And so a lot of times what we're doing is coming into church and just looking for something easy. Yeah. Now, what I mean by easy, because when, when you say that in church, people think you mean soft on sin. You know, oh yeah, everybody wants to go to church that's soft. That's not even what I'm talking about. We want to come in and just slide into amen mode. Yeah. So the guy can get up and start preaching. We just go, amen, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He could be up there running his fingers over his lips and reading a phone book, and we're just going, praise God, amen, glory to God. Because we're not really paying attention. We're not engaging with the Holy Spirit. We're not allowing Christ to say anything to us. We just like to slide into that routine. And Hey, I've preached those meetings where all you got to do is get up, kind of spit and run around a little bit, jump up and down, quote a couple verses, scream a, 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 a little rhyming tune to people over and over, and you got yourself a revival. They'll walk out and go, boy, you got to come hear this guy. Man, he's got the Holy Ghost. He didn't even, he didn't even open his Bible. Didn't, didn't read a scripture. And, and just, just whatever. So I, I, we're better than that. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the ability to listen. So when we hear something and we go, well, I don't know what to do with that. Where do I go with that? Don't let our first response be shut down. Let our first response be, Lord, I'm open. I just want to hear you, Father. I know I have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had. And if this conflicts with that Jesus, I'm able to just say, okay, that's enough for me. I don't need any more. But if it's something to wrestle with, then I want to wrestle with it. Are we on the same page? Yeah. That's just sort of one of the upfront statements as you get started in three meetings is just to say, hey, 
as, as it falls out there in front of you, just let the Holy Spirit do the wrestling. You hold his hand, he'll hold yours. And, let, and see what happens.